Bay Search and Rescue Team based at Flukeborough are a 12-strong team who support the emergency services across the South Lakes. The team had their busiest year last year with a total of 19 call-outs as opposed to the average 8 or 9 per year. The team's been around for about 10 years. Uh, it was started by a couple of the guys who were ex-Coast Guard and they were involved with uh, quite a, a difficult rescue uh, down at Silverdale where, where a gentleman got stuck in the quicksand um, overnight and it took 32 members of the emergency services to get him out the following day. It actually got to a point where the tide was just going over his head when they did finally get him out and they realised at the time that the equipment that they had wasn't working basically. Everything that they tried failed. Um, so two of the guys that were actually on that rescue um, set out to find better equipment for doing rescues in this particular environment. Um, and we evolved and, and evolved and tried to get better equipment over the 10 years. And we ended up where we are today, stuff in the back of uh, one of the Haglunds. The Haglund vehicles are ex-military machines built for the snowy conditions in Sweden. Its enormous tracks can easily travel over the terrain of the Kent estuary, even paddling through deep channels. The key thing to a vehicle like this is it will hold 18 people all together in the nice and warm, dry, unlike a hovercraft or a little Argo, and as we found this morning, standing around for a few minutes is freezing cold. The team found themselves training local fire crews, which led to a collaboration between the two services. We're actually uh, now officially Cumbria Fire and Rescue's basically all-terrain rescue team. Um, so we come in if they need us for the very specialist stuff. We can drive these vehicles just about anywhere, so it's not just on the bay. It means that we can get across soft marshland, we can get across deep snow, we, we can get across rivers, uh, lots of places where you can't send ordinary vehicles or Land Rovers and things like that. These are designed for this sort of thing. We have two of them, and it makes more sense to make use of them rather than having them sitting here down at, down at Fluke, but when there's obviously incidents going on elsewhere. The team proved their worth across the county when they were called up to Cockermouth to help with the floods and again coming to the rescue during the snow when ambulances couldn't get where they were needed. The independent charity works together with the Hovercraft and RNLI at Morecambe, Her Majesty's Coast Guard at Arnside and the Ulverston and Dudden inshore rescue teams. We're a volunteer team, everybody has day jobs. Um, we don't really have a fundraising team, the operational team members kind of do that as well. We are looking for people to help us with fundraising because it's a constant battle. But we do get supported by a lot of charitable funds locally who have seen what we do and seen us in the news and things uh, and realised. We go to a lot of the major events, um, so any of the Westmoreland County show, um, the steam gathering, any of the local events that we get to that, that would like us to turn up or that we think is suitable, because part of our role as a charity and as a search and rescue team is really to get the idea across to people that it is very dangerous out here. As a team, base search and rescue save enough money to operate a year or 18 months in advance so they'll always be able to carry on saving lives. Any money they raise over their budget can go towards upgrading and repairing their equipment. We never ask for a donation, nobody ever does, um, but on the back of it people are often generous enough to give us something if we have helped them. Katie Robinson, Northwest Evening Mail.